guys, we're off. We're gonna try out the new SSR, SR300S today. As you might imagine, I'm pretty pumped. Um, I wanna see how this thing does and uh, really excited to try it. So we are off now to get some fuel and to go break 100 and get some entry money for the uh, trail park, Hollister Hills in California, Hollister, California. Been going there since I was a kid. So we'll go down some fun single track and uh, just take it easy on the bike today and break it in and figure out how it runs and take it from there. So thanks for watching and I hope to download you guys over the course of time. Uh, quite a bit more on the SR300. So, pumped about it. Stoked to talk to you guys about it. Let's go ride. Hollister Hills. Been a great place, super dry this time of year. Well, apparently the store they have in here is not open unless it's a weekend, so bummer for me. I didn't bring a, uh, a tire gauge, so I'll have to wing it on that one. But anyways, let's go find a good place to park. guys we finally made it it's beautiful out here still a little bit overcast that'll be really nice for riding and first things first I noticed a couple things on the bike they're a little funky like the front brake line for example is behind the number plate it should be in front otherwise I'm going to destroy that number plate when I start riding this bike so I'm gonna go ahead and put that where it belongs I'm gonna pop the seat and make sure that it has an air filter in it I'm sure it does but you never know if it's seated improperly or what have you so we're just gonna check that out we've done a few heat cycles at the house uh, bike looks awesome. I can't wait to use it. I mean this thing is just So close to like a Japanese production bike. It's not even funny So I'm excited to see how it runs how it works out here uh, Seat of the pants at home and has great torque. So I'm pumped. I'm gonna check those little items I'm gonna get geared up. We're gonna get the heck on out and get on some trails All right, boys and girls, back to crappy audio. Sorry about that. I'll probably be screaming at you while I'm on the bike. Hopefully I don't sound like a big dumb idiot. Or maybe I already do. In either case, it's all good because we're going riding. So couldn't put uh, or couldn't check the air pressure in the tires because like I mentioned earlier, I'm a jackass and I didn't bring a tire gauge. It actually looks a little on the low side but in about a half hour they're going to be up a few psi anyway so wish me luck let's check this thing out man it's a good looking bike i'm excited fuel is on this bike has reserve uh haven't used one of those in a while so I need to uh turn on the key press the old button comes right to life Everything feels really good, like the way everything falls at hand, like the cockpit and the seat height. Uh, even the natural lever position was pretty good. So I did have to route the brake into the front of the throttle cable when I put the brake line back in the front. They were sort of crisscrossed or tangled up, so no big deal. You can tell the bike's a little bit lean. Allegedly, it's going to get a green sticker, so even though that's going away in the next couple of years in California anyways um, good to know and you know usually when you get a bike that's green sticker from the factory they're jetted they're very lean starved of fuel they barely run so let's see shifters a little bit low Feels really plush. Power is mellow, which is good. Harmony 
skate, been riding this since I was a little kid. Poison oak. Right now, I cannot feel my back break at all. Maybe a little bit low. That's okay. hill from Harmony Gate and if you take a left here you are on Pete's path don't know if you guys can see that super beautiful out here anyway this is a sweet trail a lot of braking bumps in it normally and uh, man the bike has really 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 good torque the carburation is lean as hell regardless of uh, you know that it still has a pretty dang good bottom end it is a 300 so a little flat on top not surprised uh, the bike came with some jets so we'll probably go ahead and swap some jets maybe we'll do it today maybe we'll do it later today we're just trying to see see the bike for what it is and man it's nice looking that's for damn sure tires seem okay so far they haven't really washed or anything yet i know it's only been about 10 seconds of riding but very cool here we go So uh, natural seating position is, is really cozy. The bars are, uh, are pretty tall, um, which feels good in this case. Trail riding, I prefer that. I do a lot, a lot, a lot of moto, motocross, um, where lower bars uh, help you actually get into ruts and turn better. So not a bar I would use on the track, not necessarily a track bike. So I feel like the pegs are a little higher than most bikes. And uh, so far the, the higher bars seem to be um, you know mitigating that too which is it's cool i went through some deep ruts when we first started and i didn't get any peg drag so um man it runs pretty good like i thought there was a couple spots where i, I kind of wanted to feather it like a two stroke because it does feel like a small bore four stroke more like a 250f 250r whatever 
and um, you know you didn't really need to do that you know it makes enough torque to kind of carry through got some lean bog I think but um we can take care of that we know what to do so brakes are good tires are actually pretty dang sticky for you know considering the terrain it's it's bone ass dry out here so that's cool my boot is hanging up on something and it's probably this it's probably this kickstarter they use this engine in uh several bikes and this kickstarter on on most bikes or at least on a you know some of the other bikes i own is tucked into the frame so at the end of the boss there i'll probably just delete this thing figure out how to do that and have a nice smooth area here because my knee brace not my boot rather is or maybe it's my boot i'm hanging up on something it's probably this and that's uh it's not good so anyways controls are a little low but i can still find them that's good who needs a kickstarter anyway all right pulled over smelt a little bit of uh coolant which is never good and they have this catch bottle and uh, it actually has a little a little hole in the cap like a vent so it's not leaking coolant it's got a little bit of a few droplets coming out, probably from sloshing around through the top of this cap. So probably be something to keep an eye on over time, but uh, at least it's not leaking, that's good. Fans running. Definitely this Kickstarter is grabbing the front of my boot. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. I don't think we need it anyway. So. I just did my first suspension bottom out. I went off a little downhill ski jump. No big deal. Definitely hit the stops and the forks. I haven't touched the clickers or the race sag or any of that at all. So, so far so good, a lot of fun. Super sick decal kit. That's okay. Fans running strong. Got a set of decals coming anyways. We got a uh, custom set we're making that uh, will be available to all very soon. Sort of the MX Revival shop kit. It should look really good on this. Anyways, pretty dang cool. The carburetor is holding this bike back. Definitely. It, uh, it's too lean, the engine's getting hot, it's running not bad, but worse. It's just choked up. If we can get a little more fuel into the engine, it'll help cool the engine. And uh, man, maybe I'll swap some jets at the, uh, at the truck. Super easy to get to this carb. Give it a little spin, pull the 17 millimeter plug off the bottom, swap another pilot and a main, and uh, let's have some fun, you know? We started on Harmony Gate, went up that first hill climb, Oki. We took a hard left onto what's called Pete's Path that sort of rides the side of these mountains out. Jay's Way sort of wraps right back in the same direction towards home, uh, opposite of Pete's. And these are super fun and flowy when they're wet. And uh, here we go.
Alright, no flat tires or anything. Suspension is exactly what you would want in a trail bike. I tend to come out here and try and ride the place like I'm on an MX track. It never works. It always messes me up. So try not to do that. And uh, especially being tight on this bike. Uh, there's something I don't like. The brake line is constantly rubbing the uh, fork tube there. We are losing water hopefully out of my camelback yes okay that scared the shit out of me <laughs> so gotta fix that brake line uh, back to what i was saying about the suspension it's really soft and really slow which is really nice it actually feels much more broken in than even at the house a couple hours ago so it's also nice and warm now so man you're not going to uh, want to smash any big jumps uh which is pretty typical of a trail bike so that's cool um when it gets down kind of stuck in the stroke a little bit over successive bumps i get a little bit of uh, a little bit of sharpness which is totally normal these are i believe uh like honda showa 47 millimeter twin chamber style uh clones um they look really nice and uh, they look maybe a little more robust even but um they're not sprung for me, right? So naturally, because of that, I'm 200 pounds roughly. The bike's gonna ride a little bit lower in the stroke to begin with. And so when it gets sacked down a little more from actually riding, and then you go over bumps and it gets forced further in the stroke, it tends to end up sort of staying or hanging out or working in the harshest part of the stroke, which is near the bottom. So, you know, on any bike that's across the board, uh, first step is to spring it for your weight, set the sag on the rear shock, and take it from there. So um, I'm pretty sure we can get springs for this for the Showa 47 mil. I gotta check the rear spring. I got a spare one at the house. So we will figure it out. Um, but for now, it's been fun, man. We are definitely deleting the Kickstarter. We're gonna take it off like right now. Like when we get back to the truck, it's, it's really uh, pushing my right leg kind of off the peg to the right which i dislike but uh man this is probably gonna be a freaking amazing trail bike so let's get it i had it in gear that time with the clutch in no problem the foot pegs feel pretty good they feel a lot like my ktm did i had a 17 250 sx and they almost even look the same, so not bad. Pretty neutral, no slip issues so far. And uh, I've been finding myself in second and third gear and then going back to second uh, when the bike gives me a little bit of lean bog, which if we can give it some more fuel, we can probably get into third and fourth gear more often, as well as uh, a little bit more comfort on the bike, of course, since we've been on it for about 20 minutes, but uh,
Guys, what's up? This is the life, right? It's a Thursday. I'm out at the trail park with a brand new dirt bike. I got my moto van, I got some snacks, and I'm just enjoying the scenery and the trails. Sounds pretty good, right? Hey, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Charles. I own MX Revival, mxrevival.com, and I bought a Chinese dirt bike. That's right, a full-size Chinese 300cc electric start, pretty well equipped dirt bike. And I just got done with my initial ride, which you guys just saw some clips from, and it was a lot of fun. So these bikes are not what you think when you get that stigma in your head from all the years of programming about China this and China that. I'm like supremely impressed with the fit, finish, quality of the components, the way it looks. Uh, the market needs this bike. So this is really cool. And I'm excited to be able to do this for you guys and for myself too, obviously. I'm having blast riding, so I can't complain. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to ask below. And if I can figure that out for you, I absolutely will. This is a brand new model for 2020. SSR has been around for quite a long time. I wanna say 2002 or 2004. And uh, I even had one of their pit bikes probably 06 or something like that. They had a lot of pit bikes, they still do. And now they have some full size models. And as mentioned, uh, this is hot off the press for them. So really cool to be able to try it out. There's really no content on these. They're really hard to find information on just yet. And for a good reason, most of you guys have probably never heard of SSR. And therefore, here we are. All right, so my background primarily is motocross. I grew up learning how to ride here, beautiful Hollister Hills, uh, Hollister, California. And uh, from there, as I grew up and got better, got into motocross, got into the typical Japanese dirt bikes. It's just what you see, that's what there is, that's what's on Craigslist, so on and so forth. Well, there's a really big problem with those now, in my opinion, and I'm not talking about quality. And to be abundantly clear, this video isn't about, is a Japanese bike better? Is a Chinese bike better? Is a European bike better? It's no right or wrong answers. It's not, yes, this is better. Yes, this is worse. It's just taking the bike for what it is, checking it out. And uh, back to my point, this bike fills a definite void in the market. Uh, new four strokes are over $10,000. It's crazy, like over 10 Gs. Worse yet, a lot of guys will go to the dealership by themselves, you know, a very expensive, you know, 450cc motocrosser, 250R, whatever it may be made for motocross, they'll take it straight up to the trail park, start trashing the bike and crashing their brains out. It's just not set up for that. And part of the reason for that is because trail bikes until recent years have looked pretty dorky, let's be honest. Uh, XR250 comes to mind, even though it was one of the greatest bikes ever made and has a huge cult following. Anyway, we need this bike for a couple reasons. One, price. This bike starting, this bike right here, $4,399 before tax, title, and fees. That's insane. Like, insane. Guys are getting these out the door around $5,000, which is ridiculous. Like, half, right? Okay, so there's that. Then there's the fact that when my wife started riding dirt bikes, she had an XR250. It was super comfortable. It was easy for her to ride. It was manageable. You could make mistakes. The only problem was it was a, it looked dorky, which we covered. B, it was massively heavy. So if she went down on the bike, I always had to be there to pick her up. I always would have been anyways, but the bike was just big. You guys that have ridden them, especially XR 400s, 650s, you know, these things are tanks and they're really purpose built. They're great for this kind of thing, for trails. Really plush, really comfortable. Anyways, she wanted a cooler looking bike. So went ahead and got her a 2006 YZ250F cool looking race bike looks awesome all white and black just like she likes just like this sucker here go figure all the power in that bike is at the upper rpm range that doesn't have the torque of the xr it doesn't have the comfort of the xr in the seat the suspension you name it so this bike we already covered price now we're talking about aesthetics mixed with usability purpose built this bike is every bit of the trail bike that my wife could have needed, that I'm currently enjoying as a 200 pound motocross rider. And it also looks incredible. The bike is comprised of Honda plastics, right? And it also has a frame that looks a lot like a clone of a 14 through 16 CRF 450. Although it is not exactly that. This is their very own. Everything, all these components, 
this is their own deal. Not only that, uh, it's not confirmed yet, uh, but it's supposed to come with a green sticker. I won't know until I get that in the mail. The dealership said that it was gonna get a green sticker. Uh, green stickers going away in California in the next couple years. I heard 2024, and I don't know if that means that everything from 2024 down is gonna be green, or if everything 2024 and down is gonna be red. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody that knows better could uh, help us out in the comments below. Regardless, this bike has a six-speed transmission, 300cc, electric start, integrated cooling fan. It has a kickstand. It's got a puke tank for the coolant. It's got freaking electric start. This bike is like the ultimate fusion of the XR and a really cool looking motocross bike. So I'm really excited about it, obviously. Um, this engine is a Zongshan 300. These engines, I think, were NC 250 in the 250 bikes. And um, now there's a big bore kit for those, which is essentially what comes on this from the factory, make it a 300. So some more pros, uh, triple clamps, machine billet, levers, breakaway machine billet, factory skid plate, uh, hubs, machine billet, lots of little CNC parts and anodized knickknacks, gold chain. One thing that's kind of odd about it considering it has, you know, the puke tank, the e-start, the kickstarter, the six-speed tranny is that it still has a 19-inch rear wheel. So it's kind of like, should have got an 18 maybe. Um, Regardless, it's fine. It does come with a 100 wide rear tire. I would prefer a, a, a 110 at least. Um, 100 is kind of like 125 two-stroke era tire. Uh, it's it's okay. These tires are actually, considering how dry it is out here, very grippy. They're really, really, really soft. You can just you can feel it with your fingers. And the softer the tire is, uh, the better it is for hard terrain. And the harder the tire is, the better it is for soft terrain. It would allow the knobs to really dig in and in hard pack situations, the knobs are more pliable. So the tires actually work pretty good. We haven't gotten it up to speed yet. Um, the bike feels really good when I'm hanging on to it. The peg to bars, the peg to seat, um, my knees aren't straining when I push myself up off the seat, uh, whereas on say my RM250 trail bike, I needed to add tall seat foam because I was a little too crouched at seat and it was kind of wearing me out standing up. For example, um, everything uh, falls at hand really nice. Uh, these guys, SSR did like an amazing job on this motorcycle. Carburation is an issue. Like I said earlier, if this gets a green sticker, just like most bikes that get a green sticker, they are jetted incredibly, incredibly lean, meaning they're sort of starved for fuel. And so this engine got a little hot. It had a few flat spots in it. It has kind of a funky carburetor for a four stroke to begin with. So if we can get some different jets in it, some bigger jets to let some more fuel in down low and up top when we're uh, under load, I think that will cool the engine down. I think that will cure the little flat bog spots. And uh, on that note, when I was out there riding and did get the bike hot, we did get the fan to kick on. So that's really cool. The fan has a uh, brass bung that is threaded directly into the radiator. It's not sort of like uh, one of those ones that has a little, I guess a thermocouple. I'm not sure if that's the right word or some sort of uh, brass or copper tang that goes into the radiator louvers so that the fan can sense when to kick on. Uh, due to temperature on the radiator. So this is like a fully integrated unit, really nice. What else we got? It has a key switch to turn on the ignition. I'm gonna kill the battery sooner or later with that. I already know it because I'm not used to that. Um, I ride pretty much strictly motocross, 95% motocross. Um, so that, that's something I'll have to get used to. Uh, it does have a lithium battery in it, which is great. Other things that make Americans feel good, it has a linkage type rear suspension, which is cool. It just feels kind of familiar. I don't really know the difference between one that does and doesn't have it, except for like, say it looks different and uh, trail guys seem to like, I think it's called a PDS or what have you on a KTM, those non-linkage KTMs. Uh, suspension was super plush. Uh, if you start to push it, especially because it's undersprung for me at uh, 200 pounds, um, it starts to kind of sack out and get a little wild in some of the chop, uh, which is normal. I mean, you need to spring the bike first and get it set up for the rider first to get it to ride higher in the stroke. Otherwise you end up uh, kind of riding in a harsher part of the stroke to begin with, followed by hitting bumps, it going further into stroke and sort of staying there when you're kind of loaded the bike down. And uh, that just makes things brutal and choppy and maybe slightly uh, deflective, if you will. Uh, but it wasn't too bad. 
and obviously I'm not up to speed yet uh, for the most part it felt really comfortable I'm talking like XR comfortable like a lot like XR comfortable really couchy so that's great for trail riding so we've gone over a lot of really cool features the bike has uh, something I don't really like at this point in time is that the Kickstarter sticks out too far normally uh, on most bikes with a Kickstarter it would be sort of skinnied up and tucked away underneath one of the frame spars but this one probably being that they use this engine in a lot of other motorcycles the uh, kickstarter boss and shaft are just kind of too far outside the frame spar and so it's catching on my boot before i go out on moto 2 sorry i'm such a motocrosser i'm gonna rip the kickstarter off and see if that kind of affords me any room and maybe i'll just delete it all the way uh sort of like the newer motocross bikes which will also shave some weight which is cool speaking of weight um it feels kind of heavy because it kind of is um it's not a stripped down motocross bike it has all the accoutrement i already mentioned uh, and it's still i think it said 256 um, on the owner's manual which with all the stuff isn't that bad i think some of the weight feel is uh, accentuated by the fact that it is a smaller bore engine and so um, power wise I feel like it just maybe makes the bike feel like there's a little bit more weight there but it's very planted and like I said earlier it's not right or wrong good or bad I'm just giving you my opinions on the bike and uh, one ride I'm really impressed like I can't believe that this is like a Chinese bike it's the total package it's fills a hole in the market that's been created by Japanese bikes. On that topic, you gotta think, these bikes, it looks to me like they've finally come around, they've finally made it, they have good components, they're a total package, uh, they're very refined. The welds on this frame look really good. All the accessories that come with it are all encompassing. This is like everything you'd want in a trail bike. It even has a pre-wire for a headlight, which is great. So we're filling that gap that the world like sincerely needs most guys aren't motocrossers like myself most guys just want to ride i just saw a kid go by on a 97 rm250 with shorts on and tennis shoes that kid doesn't know pain yet but he will maybe as soon as today um anyway point being this bike is right in the gap between antiquated trail bikes that they've been selling for years and years and years and the super expensive bikes be them track or trail this is a great bike for I mean I'm not a beginner I'm actually a decent rider and like I'm having a blast on it so beginner intermediate fast guys it doesn't matter like you can take this bike I think and just go ride it and have fun get a little more fuel in it get it breathing a little better the market needs this bike this bike is the XR inside of a super cool modern looking motocross chassis with all the fairings to match and all the trail accessories that you need. And that's why I bought it. I saw this bike on the internet. I don't even remember how, and I must have binged for content for the next 72 hours. It really took a hold of me. I just right away knew this bike, especially with the way it is now, and they're only getting it better. Um, we need them. I think there's a just a perfect spot that fits. Seriously, most people who ride dirt bikes or want to ride dirt bikes or can't afford, you know, a new Japanese bike or don't want to buy something off Craigslist that let's face it is destined to explode you don't know what it's been through uh, unless you know the owner and you've seen him maintain the bike you just don't know usually it's fine but sometimes it's not I mean the complete engine in this bike is like $1,500 that's like a top-end parts only for a Japanese bike so guys we're on to something here um, I want to spend more time on this bike I want to do what I always do to bikes, rip them apart, make them look sick. This bike's got a great head start already. Um, knowing that I can use some Honda components on it is just awesome because that's going to allow me to do what I want to do. And we're going to go ahead and do that in the next few parts of this bike series. So stay tuned. For now, I'm going to go on another ride. I think I've rambled on enough. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the video. Consider subscribing if you want to see more about this bike or any previous or upcoming bike builds we have going on. Just going to throw a little snack down the hatch for my fat ass and then we're going to get back on the trail after I rip that Kickstarter off, of course. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, before I go out again, I do need to address a few things. 
as mentioned you can see that the uh, fork stanchion is sort of rubbing the brake line here it's just barely touching just a little bit of relief gets it off of the fork so that's a good thing um, it looks like down here normally this uh, metal near the banjo bolt would actually be rotated in from tightening it, tightening it and it would be touching the caliper so I think that'll give me the relief I need. I don't want to do that out here because I don't have any brake fluid and the uh, Hollister store is not open during the week apparently so I would suck to uh, crack that banjo bolt to slide it over and then uh, you know run out, run out of front brake and I use it more than anything so we're gonna go ahead and not do that right now. I will probably go ahead and uh, raise this up a tooth. It's a little too low. You can kind of see the peg in relation to the shifter is a little bit higher. So lost our uh, factory graphics kit here. That's okay. We'll take care of that soon. And then if you guys can see straight down, the Kickstarter I mentioned is kind of hanging outward of the frame spar and that's grabbing the front of my boot. So I'm probably just gonna take this off for now, especially because we have e-start. I don't really see the point. Um, it's not that far of a push if I need to. So it is what it is and it'll be my fault in any case. So other than that, we need to go ahead and raise this up a little bit too. It's just, it's just too low. Like in relation to the peg, you can see it's like a whole step down. So thankfully, you know, we got a head start on that because this sucker will go loose already. So let's see, we're going to do the brake. We're going to do the shifter. We're not going to touch the front brake. And uh, we're not going to mess with the suspension preload or anything because with the wrong springs in it, it's not going to matter. Though I probably will go ahead and bleed the forks up here, which I'm willing to bet as these are uh, Showa clones, we can get some Motion Pro quick bleeders in there. So, all right, off to do a little tweaking. Oh, one final thing. I will probably go ahead and rejet this real quick, get some brass in there with some larger holes, flow a little more fuel, see if I can get it to run a little better and uh, cool the engine down and stop having those green sticker dead spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that now. All right, guys, well, first and foremost, let's go ahead and get rid of this bad boy. See if that helps. The shaft is sticking out a little bit still, of course, but it is, um, quite a bit further down than the part that's hitting my actual boot. So go ahead and put that back in there. Make sure no dirt gets in. Have to throw that on the scale. See what we just shaved. What's next? So the uh, brake pedal bolt, eight millimeter, just like most Japanese bikes. So that feels like home. Go ahead and take that off. Set that aside as they are greased. You don't want to get any uh, sand up in that bad boy. Go ahead and put it in my cup holder here. We have to pull the spring off the bottom and we're free. So now we can go ahead and sort of adjust this down in the back, which will force the tip of the pedal to come up. All right. And that is, that's a good bit. I'd rather it be on the high side than the low side and just get used to the sensitivity of it. So we're gonna just do that. It is easier to put the bolt back in before the spring goes back on. Otherwise you're fighting uh, the location against the spring's power. Get that started, hit it with the old ratchet. There's that. Go ahead and do the same thing with the K-Start. There you go. You don't want to trust the impact gun. It's just a means of speed. Put the spring back in. There we go. I think, yep. And then this uh, jam nut was loose, but uh, not anymore, you know, because we got one of those fancy 10 millimeters. So that is quite a bit higher. It's like right there, actuation and engagement, which I like. So we fixed that, we fixed that. Now we got to flip the bike around and probably do a quick rejet since we have jets and 
we know that carburetor is really holding up the show right now so let's get to it all right fellers so we're gonna get in this carburetor i'm pumped i had some uh rubber gloves in the old moto van as well as always some blue shop regs because that's what moto vans are for i uh, suggest you try it so uh, this bike comes with two extra pilots, two extra mains. So we got a 165 main extra, 162 main, and I think it was a 42 pilot and a 45 pilot. So we'll see what's in here and see if we can actually even go up. So pretty easy deal. You just need a flathead screwdriver, uh, a six millimeter socket for the main jet, a flathead to loosen up the carb boot a little bit and also to get the pilot out. So let's do it. Also good to take note of the orientation of the carburetor before you spin it so you can put it back to where it belongs. Carburetor's trippy. It's, it's like a YZ250 carburetor, you know, like one you'd find in a two stroke. So I don't know how that really works. Imagine putting a key and flat slide on this thing with an accelerator pump like you'd find on any you know, more race oriented bike, you'd probably really bring this sucker to life. Maybe we'll try it. So blue rags for the hands and the jets and then some blue rags in here. There's gonna be, you know, a ton of gas coming out, which is whatever. Um, you could tip the bike over a few times with the fuel off and get some of this fuel to overflow first, but I'm incredibly impatient, which is exactly why I bought this bike in the first place. So 17, pop the bowl, turn the gas off, because you're smart, right? Not like me with the gas on, let it run eternally. And uh, just let the gas drain. I don't know if you guys can see that draining out of there in the back. It's a little shadowy on film, but there will be a shitload of gas and it's gonna run all down the engine and it's gonna run all over the ground. So rotate the rag. Get as much of it sopped up as you can. So much easier than uh, the FCR carb, the flat slide on the Japanese bikes, just because this thing's so small, it's not hitting anything as it rotates, which is great. Um, maybe it would even hit the starter if it hadn't uh, FCR. But anyway, that was not as much fuel as I thought would come out, so. We didn't even get a bunch of uh, drainage down the back of the engine while we rotated the rag. That's good. Pretty clean in there, as it should be as a new bike. So, first things first, go ahead and locate your pilot jet and take that little bastard out. Ah, we're not going to be able to get the pilot out without taking the bowl off because you can only get to the main jet in the center here. The pilot's a little bit forward of the main jet, and uh, that's pretty common too. A lot of times you have to take these bowls off, so if I can do it, I'm gonna do it. It's uh, just four Phillips, screw, uh, Phillips screws, and looks like I can clear it. So add that to your list of tools you need to do this job. All right. These are notorious for stripping, so an impact gun actually does the trick the best, but we'll see if we can pull this off at these odd angles we have here. If not, we'll just do the main jet. All right, we are in. All right, where were we? So standard screwdriver, pilot is forward of the main, and you just sort of feel around until the screwdriver slots in. Mind you, when you put the jet back in, don't go ape shit on it. You know, it's just brass and cheap aluminum. So you also want to try and keep this thing from falling in the dirt. So there's our pilot jet. It is a 40. That's good. It's very small. So we're going to put a 42 in it, which is the next size up. That should help immensely uh, with the flat spots, although it doesn't have huge flat spots down low. They're kind of just outside of down low, but I bet this helps. And we will then be able to uh, 
tune the air screw, which is what mixes air and fuel with this particular jet circuit. So 40 out, have the new 42 getting ready to go back in. Start it with your hand, kind of keep it in there, slot the screwdriver, and then just be gentle with these things. They are not bulletproof. When it starts to seat, just give it a little, a little snug, no big deal. Don't go crazy, super important. Now we gotta do the main jet, that's a six millimeter uh, socket right there. From here, go ahead, adjust your all sixteenths accordingly, and get that main jet out of there. What do we have here? A 160, again, very small jet compared to the extras. So we're gonna go one size up, which is awesome. We've got a 162. This is probably gonna wake this bike up uh, a good deal. All right, pretty simple. Basic field strip. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the float bowl back on. All right, this may or may not be a little bit of a wrestle. You wanna be super mindful of the pin that holds this float in. It is not held in by anything but the bowl. So there's like a dowel that goes through here and holds the float into position. Make sure that isn't sticking out somewhat. It will prohibit the bowl from going back on properly and you'll be so pissed off and confused. When you're putting the screws back in, make sure that you go through this hose guide here. This little metal tab it has a screw hole in it. You can see it right there. So there's one on uh, opposite corners of one another. Just getting these started for now. I won't torque them until I'm all the way done. Put the drain plug back in your float bowl. Make sure the rubber gasket is still on it or you are going to have a really short next ride. Hit it with the 17. Not crazy tight. Rotate everything back into position. Make sure you didn't pop any hoses off underneath the seat. Just give it a good once over. And when your carburetor is back into proper orientation, which is essentially straight up and down, go ahead and tighten back up your hose clamps. All right, easy money. We got all of our lower controls adjusted. We have the carburetor rejet. We got rid of that bulky Kickstarter. We're gonna take it for a rip. All right, we gotta fill that bowl back up with fuel on. This thing has reserve, by the way, which is pretty cool. I'll probably screw that up someday and start it on reserve and run it fresh out of gas. So we'll see. How will these new jets do? A lot higher idle already just for more fuel. We should probably take care of that before we go. a shot bringing the screwdriver with us just in case oh my god so much better than the first ride already you guys can hear the difference way more responsive so that's really cool obviously um they give you some jets to tinker around with the bike oh man huge difference huge without even riding it i can smell more fuel being burned yeah, all right. hung up by the Kickstarter and it runs way better way more response this will be a lot more fun This 
thing kicks ass. This is a great trail bike. So cool. I got great, great clearance down here now. Once I get rid of this somehow, that's perfect. I'm barely getting any rub from this. I could probably get the bolt out alone and be good, but huge difference. My boot is close to the bike. Back brakes working, bike's running seriously 10 times better. Man, this is nice right here. I like that. Let's go find some stuff in the trees. motocross bikes many of which have had EFI over the years so you know that's not a fair comparison and uh, I think the carburetor is fine generally for a wide range of skill levels um, a lot of people are gonna probably love it and uh, just being used to more being used to EFI being used to 450s you know or 250 two strokes um, I just feel a little hesitation in that carburetor damn Look at that animal turd right there, buddy. And uh, running a lot better. Maybe I can tune out that flat spot, but you know, like a regular four stroke style carburetor has, I don't know, three times as many jetting circuits in it. And I can kind of feel that, but you know, those are race bikes. So man, all in all, now that the thing can kind of get out of its own way a little bit better with that rejet, it's flowing a little bit better. The suspension is, um, pretty dang smooth if you sack it out in a big hole you feel it but man it's it's super plush this this is really cool let's go ahead and do a little stuff in the trees i probably should get some bark busters but see how she does in here i'm glad i have a cooling fan engine is so quiet all right this is uh one of the troll trails there's a reason i got gps on me i'm out here riding alone and See how we do. So fun. These pegs are really high off the ground, so I haven't scrubbed any dirt or any walls just yet in those real deep ruts. That's awesome. Got some manzanita here. Going into the old manzanita tunnel. Oh, this bike was made for this right here. It is so smooth and plush. And the power is so insanely manageable. Man, like, I'm telling you guys, this, the sport needs this bike. 
and bikes like it. Oh, I just hit a tree and it didn't feel good. Got our fan going, that's good. Electric start when you're on a trail, killer, and you stall. Absolutely awesome. This riding position is so comfortable. I'm about six feet tall. And uh, the pegs, the bars, I don't feel crouched. I don't feel uh, any discomfort. I'm kind of neutral where I need to be and able to make maneuvers. And there's a stall due to my carburation. Dude, this is awesome. All right, our carburation's a little off. We keep flaming out here. That's okay. I'm going to probably mess with that air fuel screw a little bit. Man, that fan's doing its job right now. Guys, this bike kicks ass, seriously. Awesome. There is, I mean, I don't even know what else there is like this that isn't like a bajillion years old in design. Note to self, don't try and start the bike in neutral or in gear. And then do it again, just to uh, prove your point. Okay, how are we doing now? All right. Idle down, but a little more air to that fuel circuit. A little rich. Bike feels so good in here. Pretty happy with this purchase. Dude, this bike's awesome in the single track. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then. Don't hit trees, boys and girls. It's bad for your hands, it's bad for your bike. It's just bad for your health in general. Just don't do it. The good thing is I crashed in Poison Oak, so at least there's that. I'm dragging it. Second gear feels really good through this stuff. Oh, lots of poison oak. What a good idea. One thing's for sure. Can't return it now. Let's get plate. cemetery man i haven't ba been out here in 10 years i didn't even realize this is where i was going i see what happens when you ride without a tour guide you end up at the troll cemetery you guys can see the little headstone over there for uh, our boy moon cheese he's probably been gone quite a while pretty sure there's a uh, story carved into the bench or something oh there it is over there 
Welcome to Troll Meadow. Please spend the time enjoying Mother Nature in Troll Meadows. The troll's love of nature was inspiration for this dedication to the troll. The troll began riding this trail in the early 1970s on his 350cc. Man, the fucking troll had a 350. I only got a 300. He probably was on a two-stroke too. Dude's a savage. I actually didn't want to come down this trail to be perfectly honest and here I am. <laughs> I'm just not man enough. Oh man! <laughs> man, pretty awesome, what a ride. And a few less decals, modified bars bent slightly to the right. That was super fun. Man, this bike really likes single track, suspension wise, power wise. What a great motorcycle. All right guys, so ride two, it was a long ride. I still haven't hit reserve. I've been riding for a couple of hours. Uh, we are missing a few more decals. The chain is officially stretched and broken in. The bike feels so good on single track. Slow speed stuff, the power is perfectly suited for that. It doesn't rip out of your hands, it doesn't want to wheelie, it doesn't want to startle or surprise you. The suspension in slow stuff like that is Honda XR plush. It's really, really good. You start getting any faster than that, it starts to sack out, but we already covered the fact that it's not sprung for me, valve for me, any of that. Uh, dude. Super fun trail bike. I'm really happy with my purchase. The Kickstarter removal was huge. I'm still getting hit in the boot just barely when I get real far forward. It's about an 80% improvement. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that somehow and get the kick gear and all that out of there if I can, if it's not incorporated somehow to the starter, which it can't be. Starter's right on top of the engine under the carb. So I can probably get away with that. Um, I got the back brake. Just right spot on where I like it, uh, immediate braking, and man, I had fun. Even that crash, I hit a tree with my uh, right hand, surprisingly no carnage, and uh, had a little fall. So if you guys have any questions about this bike, of course, ask below. I'm going to keep going with this. I think the uh, carburetor, it's a lot closer. It's got way more power than it did on uh, ride number one. Um, I'm wondering if I can swap that carb out all the way, but um, for sure, if uh, you want to run it the way it is, even with the choked up stock jets, I think that would be perfect for some people. The way it is now will probably be better for most people, but um, man, that bike is going to be extremely versatile for a ton of people and a huge part of the market. You know, you got a motorcycle for $4,399 before taxes and fees. It looks like a badass 450. It's got uh, the plush suspension and the, and the chill engine that uh, the market really needs. And man, the quality is there. I'm, I can't believe the quality of the castings and the uh, forgings and extru extrusions and all the joints. They're welded together and pair that with a bunch of uh, Honda interchangeability, probably brakes and sprockets and I'll confirm that in the future uh, and a cool look and some decals, whatever you like for your trail bike. The fan, the puke tank, um, pretty badass. I'm stoked, I'm glad I bought it. Glad I have money in my pocket and uh, look forward to showing you guys more. So please go ahead and give the video a like. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more and we're gonna keep this Chinese bike thing going. Appreciate you guys. I will talk to you soon.